We've got a special guest on the Friday edition of the Morning Pit. He is the X Factor himself, fresh off testing the NBA draft process. Pitt senior forward Blake Hinson. Hear from Blake about why he went into the draft process, why he chose to return to Pitt, and what he's looking for out of his final year with the Panthers this coming season, all on today's Morning Pit on youtube.com slash panthalair.com. Yeah, it's the Friday edition of the Morning Pit here on youtube.com slash panthalair.com. I'm Chris Peak from panthalair.com, and I told you the last couple days we were working on something special for today's Morning Pit for the Friday Morning Pit and and I, I sometimes I, I refrain from talking about it like that because I don't want to jinx it, but it came together. We got Blake Henson talking uh, about everything because I think you got a lot of questions for Blake Henson. I got a lot of questions for Blake Henson, and it was great to be able to sit down and chat with him about why he went into the NBA draft process, what the process was actually like, the feedback he got, and ultimately why he came out of the draft process and returned to Pitt for one more season. We also talked about what he thought about last season's success with the Pitt Panthers. We talked about what he's expecting out of this season, what he thinks of the newcomers, how he's going to work together with Zach Austin. We covered a lot of ground. Jeff Cable's role uh, and, and, and kind of involvement as Blake Hinson went through the draft process. We really talked about a lot, and I think you're going to really enjoy hearing from Blake Hinson today. So I'm really excited to have him as a guest here on the morning pit you know the deal we always got to say like this video and subscribe to the youtube channel youtube.com slash panther and then head over and check out the website panther-lair.com pittsburgh.rivals.com the most comprehensive source of pit sports news on the internet football basketball and recruiting panther-lair.com pittsburgh.rivals.com Taking a break from the football recruiting today to talk a little basketball and nobody better to join us than Pitt's own Blake Henson. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I know I enjoyed this conversation. Blake is always a good interview. And I think you'll find it pretty interesting what he ultimately, the feedback he ultimately got out of the NBA draft, pro- draft process and why he decided to come back to Pitt and what he's going to work on. So let's cut out the preamble, stop hearing from me, and hear from Blake Henson. And Blake, I really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, glad to catch up with you. Um, nice yeah. to see you again after, a, a, I feel like it's been a few months since we talked to you, but it's been a busy few months Yeah, for you. <laughs> Obviously going into the NBA draft process, going through it about five or six weeks, and then uh, deciding to return to Pitt. We'll get to that decision in a minute, but I wanted to start off just by asking you about that process itself. I mean, w- you know, obviously I've never been on the inside of it. Probably a lot of people watching this video haven't. We all say, oh, he's testing the process. What did that actually look like? What were the last, you know, what were those five, five and a half, six weeks like uh, for you? What all did you do? So um, it's your choice to go train remote or not. I decided to go train remote. Um, so I was just training every day. It was like three times a day. I wake up, do like an on-court session, then weight room. Then we all play pickup. Some other guys who was testing the draft, and um, just from my personal experience, I had a great time. It was fun. Met a lot of the, a lot of the other guys who were testing the waters, and um, got to bounce ideas off them. Like, what do you think? What's the best idea for you? You know, gave you a lot of thinking time. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, but it's just training. And then when you're training, you're waiting on the team to call so you can come do a workout. And um, when you're training, you're pretty much just training for that workout in specific. Um, you got people getting phone calls, trying to get, um, information of what these work, what these teams are doing for the workouts. And you're just repping the same drills. So when you get there, you try to be perfect Mm -hmm. and that's how it works. That's, that's all you're doing. So you're just preparing for, um, a tryout, pretty much an interview with an NBA team. Right. Just waiting for that phone to ring, I guess. Right. Where, Where were you? Where'd you have to go to do this? I was at impact Academy. Where's that? In Vegas. Oh, okay. Okay. So you were out in in Las Vegas. Um, Are are any NBA guys watching you on the day-to-day as you're training there, or is it just you wait and get the call and go see them? Uh, Yeah, there was one day, there was a pro day. There was like nearly all teams were there besides the ones in the playoffs. This was about a month ago. Mm -hmm. So at this time, it was like six teams left. So it was pretty much every team there besides those teams who were in the playoffs. And that's that was like a pro day. That's what they called it, an impact pro day Mm -hmm. um i believe they changed the rule on that though i believe that's the last one of those i believe you can't do that anymore coming up next season oh so you'll have to go to the team you will have to go to one of like the chicago draft process thing i forget what the name is it the um the combine like 
that's the only place where they can evaluate you. I don't know why they changed the rule, but I'm pretty sure they changed that rule. Right. As you're going into those workouts, then I'm thinking on the football side, you know, if a school holds its pro day, the quarterbacks have like basically a script, right? I mean, they're going to do this pass, this pass, this pattern, that pattern. Do you you have it kind of down to a a script like that? Or is it more just kind of free? Hey, let's see you shoot for a while. Let's see you dribble for a while. For the workouts. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we just like I said, they get information. They try to get as much information. About, you never really know what they're going to throw at you. Every team is different. Every team measures certain things, does different drills. But for the workouts, yes. You're practicing the drills they're bringing you to. You're practicing the shots. You feel like they're going to make you, you know, drill. But for the pro day, no. And that's why I feel like um, I've heard Impact's pro day was so popular because they just threw the ball out there and we kind of played. <laughs> and when in these in the draft process, you never really see that. Everything's structured, everything's cone drill, everything's that. So that gave them the opportunity to see like live action play. Mm-hmm. And that's why it was so popular. But just like I said, I don't think they're doing that anymore. Gotcha. So how much did you travel uh during during those those five or six weeks? How how many teams did you go out and see? That's one. I just I just I got I got multiple calls, but it was after the 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 date of coming back. Mm. or stand so I had to make the decision which made the decision so much rougher because you got teams you know you got multiple teams calling you like you know we'll take you for a workout but it's after the 31st which is the day you had to come back so but before the 31st I got one workout and I was with the Brooklyn Nets oh okay so did yeah. you go to Brooklyn for that or where, where they have you yeah going? I went to Brooklyn so that was Vegas to Brooklyn <laughs> and back to Vegas within 48 hours that's that's a lot of travel and a lot of time changes um I'm curious, you know, taking it back to, I think it was April 20th, April 21st or so, and you, you announced that you were going to test out the process leading up to that. What what was, you know, how long did you wrestle with the decision and kind of what went into the decision to, to, to try out the process? Uh, it didn't really, it, it took me a while to realize this was like reality, you know, coming from where I came from. It's just like, you know, the wheel of misfortune was rolling for a long time for me. So being able to even say that was like, really? So like, um, that was, that was cool, but it didn't take much time. It took me about two days to really say, okay, I'm gonna try it because I think it's, I never, you never want to be that guy who's just doing it because he can, Mm -hmm. you want to be legitimate. You want to be, you want to be an actual, uh, prospect in the draft process. And, you know, once I realized I thought I was, I definitely was, I, you know, I did it. Mm Mm-hmm. So then, you know, as you go through it, those those five or six weeks, what was the feedback that you got? I mean, what were you hearing from either trainers or just the people who would offer you, you know, value? It was a, there's a gigantic emphasis on getting shape, <laughs> extreme emphasis on getting shape. So I've been working on that hard and, um, you know, getting in shape, being in shape as for everybody, athlete or not, shows discipline. You know what I mean? And I really want to, I feel, I, to myself, I feel like I'm a disciplined person, but clearly, there's just more discipline. Like there's a there's levels to being disciplined. So like I'm taking it very personal this this time around, this, 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 this next season, just to show, I mean, because you know you never know if something if someone goes home, does anything. You never know. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about health, when you're talking about how in shape is it, that right there, it shows. And I, I'm taking it out, I, I I'm gonna show like I'm disciplined enough to do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's that but that was the emphasis and um i'm listening you know what i mean i'm excited about it too that's a that's another challenge on your plate you can wake up and just chase every day mm-hmm. I, I think there was maybe one photo that made it out on social media during those six weeks and of course the pit fans were pouring over it They're like, and everybody's response was wow blake looks like he's in shape did you lose weight just during those six weeks i mean how how much weight have you lost yeah um I, I've, I've lost some for sure um i'm just i, I don't, don't want to say nothing right now Okay, <laughs> but um, I, I we'll see we'll see when it's time when that first game for sure. Okay, well, I, well, I'm curious. I mean, and uh, you know, you can give the same answer here, but what did you play at last year? Uh, I don't know. Like this is my thing. I promise you, I'm not. I can't. I cannot. I can't even lie to you. Okay. I I, I still don't get on the scale. I look in the mirror every day and be like, I look good. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't step on the scale. I have a mental thing with the scale. Like if I get on the scale. And if a like it's a really good number and it's low and I feel like then I'm gonna go home and be like, you know what? Give me some ice cream. You know what I mean? I deserve it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but if it's a really bad number, then I'm like, you know, depressed and bogged down all day and lose motivation. 
So I don't, I do it like once a week. Mm-hmm. I do it like once a week. And last season, I didn't get on it at all because I knew I wasn't going to be satisfied with it. <laughs> so I just, I just didn't. But this year, my strength and conditioning coach ain't letting me do that this time around. <laughs> so um, I do it once. St- I still don't do it as much as he wants me to, but I do it like once a week now. Mm-hmm. You feel like it's more like like diet, more working out. I mean, what, what's your focus? Where's that? Definitely, it, it's definitely just diet. I mean, I work out plenty. You know what I mean? I work out plenty. I'm just I'm just one of those guys. I can't. I'm antsy. I always like to move and work work out. But right. one being educated on what to eat and what and how and how to eat and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and, and then actually doing it. You know what I mean? Right. So that's that's all it is. Gotcha. All right. So then you came down to, up to that May 31st deadline. You're going. You know. You're you're you have to make the decision. What what did it ultimately come down to when when you had to make the decision of whether to go or to come back? Oh, you know, in that process, I didn't feel like I got as much. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? For lack of a better term, love. I didn't feel like I got the um respect. Uh, I felt like I deserved, and um, you know, there's no better opportunity but come back and go gain some more. You know what I mean? So that was all. I mean, that was the that was the end all be all of it. And I feel like this team and this coaching staff will help me in any circumstances to help me gain that respect as well um, for the next level. So that's what it comes down to. For sure. I, I feel like everybody wants to believe that they're ready for the highest level, right? Like, did, did you have to kind of mentally like train yourself of like, okay, I'm going to be honest about what I'm getting. I'm going to be honest about what feedback I'm getting and be honest about what love I'm getting. I mean, was that something you had to sort of talk yourself into a little bit? Yeah. you. I mean, I love, I love being, you know, just dead honest with me, with myself. And mm-hmm. uh, when I, when I knew when the, when the draft process started, I knew being in shape, my body was going to be like something that might get brought up. Mm-hmm. I guess going through the process showed me how much did it really matter or how many, how, how much did it affect teams on how, how how they felt about me, you know? And a lot of teams honestly was like, it's fine. We just got to make sure you're in shape. You know what I mean? Like, can you do the things we're asking you to do? You can weigh as much as you want. We don't care. As long as you're doing the things we ask you to do, it doesn't matter. But right. um, just, I was thinking, to look the part, if that's not, that's not too much of a good thing. <laughs> I mean, you want to look the part in a good way. You don't want to look the part in a bad way. And I was looking the part in a worse way than everybody else. I wasn't in shape as everybody else. I wasn't physically appealing as everybody else. And I want to change that. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I can go out there and I'll play them, but there's still, you're leaving something up to chance. You're still leaving some doubt in people's heads. So I'm, I'm, I'm just ready to take on new challenges. And if that's the challenges I need to take on, which it is, I'm running to it full speed every time. Sure. You feel like you're, you know, or what parts of your game do you feel like you can elevate or improve just by getting in better shape? Do you feel like there's stuff you can, you're going to be able to do on the court that, you know, as you keep getting in better shape? Just last longer, just be able to, I don't need a break, you know what I mean? Or be able to guard, um, be able to take bigger challenges when I guard. I didn't, through the draft process, I didn't get many bad comments about my defense, to be told. I was not many. I got some, but not many at all. But um, one of them was to take bigger challenges on. You know what I mean? So guard that person who just scored three in a row. You know what I mean? Be the person who cooled the flame off. You know what I mean? Be one of those people. And you don't have to be that guy at all times, but be capable. You know what I mean? So being in shape is going to be, it's, it's going to help with that. Gotcha. So you make the decision, uh, you know, whatever. It got announced on, on May 30th. I'm sure you decided a day or two before that. But I was curious, who, who was your first call when you were when you finally settled on it? Like, all right, I'm coming back, you know, at Pitt. Was, was it Coach Capel? Yeah, Coach it was Brown, Jeff somebody else? It was, it was Jeff? Jeff. Yep. What, what did he say? What was his response when you told him? He was like, good. I mean, we, was, he was, we were talking throughout the whole process. So, you know, he knew where I was leaning towards anyway. You know what I mean? He was just waiting on me to just pretty much tell him. I'm a, I'm a buy my ticket back, back home. So <laughs> he, I think he knew, I, I didn't, I don't think that shocked him at all. We, we talked every day throughout the process. Would you say probably the same thing when you first told him you were going to go into it? He probably wasn't surprised by that either. No, he didn't. He, yeah, he told, he, he told me if he was me, he would do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of got that impression, you know, from a couple of years ago when Justin Champagne went through it, it seemed like he supported more than trying to get you to come back. He just he, supported he handles you. it. 
he handles it the best way. I feel like a, a, a college coach could, because you, I mean, you're potentially maybe losing a player, but that's not what Coach Capel is about. Coach Capel is confident in his own coaching. Not to say, I mean, of course he wants you, but he's not going to sit here and try to stop you from what you want for him. He's not right. self. He's he's very selfless. He's it's the coach of the year. He's he he, he got it all. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, it's, like I said, we haven't talked to you since the end of the NCAA tournament. You look back on last season, I'm sure you came into Pitt a year ago at this time. You had high expectations, but did it exceed your expectations, what you guys ultimately accomplished last year? No. No. <laughs> no, I mean, to be totally honest with you, no. Um, me personally, I feel like we, we, we came short of a championship that we should have had if I'm being totally honest. So um, I'm, I've been locked in on just getting back to that moment and, and finishing the job, you know? So no, I don't feel like we overachieved at all. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I mean, we beat expectations, but they weren't our expectations. Our expectations was on the ring. And right. that's where it's always at. Coming into this year now, I mean, obviously I think you were a, a leader and a big presence in the locker room last year, but certainly Nellie Cummings, Jamarius Burton, Nike Savannah, Greg Elliott, you guys had, a lot of seniors on last year's team. Do you feel like that's a role you have to step into even more this year as you as you come come up to the season? To be honest, no, I don't think I have to step into any um, different leadership role. I'm a lead the way I lead, like I always lead, and um, other people are going to fill those roles because they're going to feel that want and need to win, and it's mm -hmm. going to be natural. And whoever wants to want, whoever has the will to win the most is going to fill those sh shoes. Mm -hmm. It's going to be natural. There's no, there's no, okay, so they're gone. So now I got to extra lead. No, that's not how that works. Because if, if I'm the only one trying to lead, then that's, I can't, I can't will every, all 13 players to want to win. Right. There have to be multiple people totally bought in and leading by example. And that's what you get when you get a winning team. You, um, I mean, we can obviously see the pit logo behind you. You're at the facility. You're around the team. Have you gotten a chance to spend some time with some of these new guys, Zach Austin, Ishmael Leggett, the freshmen who've come in? Yeah, I spent. Um, we watched the last two finals games together. That's how we've been um, getting to know each other, and it's been a good experience. I mean, they're they're pit guys, one hundred percent, and um, we're getting well good. We're get we're getting well. I mean, getting together pretty pretty um good quicker than last year's team. Oh yeah. Yeah. What? Why? Why do you? Uh, why do you think that is? No, just because we didn't. Uh, uh, everybody wasn't here until we had. It took us a long time to get everybody here last year. So yeah. it was crazy how the camaraderie started because we were just meeting people when the season was like literally the day of. So everybody's here. So it, it, there's no problem. Every everybody's talking. We're getting to know each other's personalities. You know, we got a lot of we got a lot in common, and we've been spending time together. It's early, but everything's been good so far. Last year, I mean, you guys not to get too far deep on on the you know basketball and lineups and stuff, but I mean, last year you guys played a lot with three guards, and then you and and Fetty or or whoever is center. It seems like Zach Austin's a different kind of guy yes. to kind of play with. How is your you know how do you see the two of you kind of working together out there? I don't. I mean. I don't know. I wish I could coach too. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sure the coaching staff is cooking up something spicy for other teams to have to deal with because I, from my evaluation from him, he's a winner. Not only is he a good player, he's a winner. So uh, I don't know. I couldn't tell you anything, but I can tell you I got a good coaching staff around me that will make sure they put him in the most lethal position for other teams to have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Well, then the last one, then uh, I think anytime a team has success, the question is always, all right, what do you do for a follow-up? You know, you had success before now, what are you going to do uh, this time? So, I mean, what's, what's the encore? I mean, what do you, you know, how do you follow up everything you guys accomplished last season? Uh, just like I said, we're, 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 we're focused on, we didn't, there's no, there's no, there's no success. I mean, last season was great. Don't get it twisted, but is we're playing for the championships. We're not here for the wins and just celebrate and then come and come short at the Miami game and be like, uh, more victory. No one <laughs> want, no one thought we was going to be here. And it's not, that's not what we're doing. Pitt is here to win championships. We're playing, we're practicing, we're working hard to win championships. So 
that's that's what you ought to expect from us. That's what we're coming. That's where our mind is at. So that's if if you want to call it an encore, if you want to call it a show, I don't know what you call it, <laughs> but we're coming for the championships. There's three available. We want all three of them. And that's why you uh that's why you came back, right? Yep. All right, Blake. Well, thanks so much for your time, man. I appreciate it. Welcome back to Pittsburgh, I guess. And uh, I'm sure we'll we'll catch up with you again sometime soon. All right. Nice. Thank you for having me on. All right. Thanks, Blake, for joining us. I, I mean, I thought that was a great conversation. Um, I, I thought a lot of interesting stuff in there. Lose weight. Get in shape was some of the biggest feedback he got. A little bit of negative comments about his defense. I thought he was pretty honest, though, about what the process was like, the feedback that he got. He went out and saw one team, you know, and, and had the, the the pro day event at an impact. Um, but, you know, I think he got a, a realistic sense. And, you know, I asked him a question in there about kind of having to be true uh, uh, and, and almost have a bit of humility because everyone, everybody wants to believe that they're ready for the pros. Everybody wants to believe that they are the best guy out there and they're ready to go and ready to play at that level. And I think if you're Blake, you know, when he wasn't getting calls, you know, all that many calls, he wasn't seeing the love, like, as he said, he had to be honest about the situation and and not necessarily give up the dream, but be realistic and say, it's not my time. You know, it's, it's not time yet. Um, I've gotten the feedback. I know what they want. I know what they're trying to get out of me. They want me to lose weight, get in shape, be a little bit better defensively. And, and just be able to last longer, have that discipline and show that discipline. And so I'm going to take it. I'm going to take the advice. I'm going to take the feedback I'm getting. And I'm going to go back to pit and get better. And I'm going to be ready for this process in a year. And I, I don't know if everyone could make that decision. I, I don't know if everyone could have that sort of wherewithal and perspective to, to choose to do that. You know, to, 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 to pull out of the process like that. I think there are probably a lot of guys who stay in the process even if they got feedback similar to or even worse than what Hinson heard. And, uh, and and ultimately, I mean, you see how it off, you know, how it could tend to work out. And so credit to Blake Hinson for just having the awareness. You know, and I think whatever you want to say about Blake Hinson, and I think there's a lot of things we can say about him. I think he's a down-to-earth guy. I think he's got a, a pretty good perspective on things. Um, I'd have to think his experience over the two years prior to coming to Pitt had a, you know, has an impact on the perspective that he has on life, on basketball, on college, on just everything. And I think that went into the decision that he made to come back. I know I enjoyed that conversation. I hope you did as well. It was great to catch up with Blake Hinson. I'm glad that came together, and I'm glad to uh, give you a little something different on a Friday. Hopefully you enjoyed it uh, as much as I did. Listen, if you did enjoy it, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantalaircom, so you never miss any of our pit video content. The daily morning pit videos, Monday through Friday, the live show on Wednesday nights, things like this, you know, an interview with Blake Henson, an interview with pit coaches, an interview with players or recruits or whoever it is. Uh, there's always interesting conversations to find out there, and we certainly uh, try and bring you as many as we can right here at youtube.com slash pantherlaircom. So, like I say, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Then head over to the website panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com for the, all the pit sports news you can handle. Football, basketball, and recruiting, it's all there at pantherlair.com and message boards where you can go talk about everything. And I think the pit fans are going to be talking after this one. So head over to the message boards at pantherlair.com. For the best online community of Pitt sports fans that you're going to find, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. Thanks to Blake Henson for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks to you for watching these videos all week and uh, certainly today. Hope you've had a great week. Hope you have a great Friday ahead of you and a great weekend coming. Hopefully uh, it's not too smoky here in Pittsburgh. That's what we're all kind of crossing our fingers for. But thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Stay tuned to pantherlair.com for coverage from the football official visits this weekend. And we will uh, catch up with you again on Monday right here, youtube.com slash